Zinc is one of the most important trace minerals in the body. Unfortunately, zinc deficiency is very common today and can lead to wide ranging problems. In this video, I want to talk about what exactly zinc is, its roles in the body and how to get enough of it, which means we will talk about zinc supplementation at the end of the video. Let's start by discussing what zinc is and why we need it. Zinc is an essential dietary mineral, meaning we need to get it from food and cannot produce it ourselves. Unlike the macro minerals, for example, magnesium or calcium, which the body needs a lot of every day, zinc is a trace mineral, meaning the body only needs a fairly small amount of it. The RDA for adult women is 8 mg of zinc per day, while adult men need 11 mg per day. That doesn't mean zinc is less important than other nutrients, however. In fact, it is involved in many bodily functions, the most important of which are immune function. A stronger immune system is probably what zinc is best known for. That's because it is necessary for immune cell function and cell signaling. It can also have antioxidative properties, meaning it reduces oxidative stress and can eliminate free radicals in the body, similar to vitamin C. For example, one study showed that an intake of around 80 mg per day of zinc can reduce the length of the common cold by up to a third. Next to its importance in the immune system, zinc is also vital for the normal growth and development of the reproductive organs and brain. Research has linked zinc deficiency to decreased growth, impaired memory, learning disabilities, and poor attention span. In turn, zinc supplementation produce very significant positive effects on both height and weight measures of children. And the effect was even greater among children who already suffered from stunted growth or were underweight. Third is hormone balance. Zinc is needed for steroid hormone synthesis, being a well-known catalyst for testosterone manufacture. In fact, zinc is often called the male mineral because it is so important for hormonal health in men, and of all the body parts, the prostate contains the highest concentration of zinc. That said, women also benefit from it because it supports the production of luteinizing hormone, which spurs ovulation and helps with the hormone production needed to support pregnancy. And last is skin support. Your skin holds a relatively high amount of about 5% of your total zinc. The reason for this is that it plays a critical role in collagen synthesis and proper wound healing. Its anti-inflammatory properties also make it an important agent in the treatment for acne, burns, and other skin problems. As you can see, zinc is critical to health, and in summary, its most important functions are to support a strong immune system, to enable growth and a healthy hormone balance, and to act as an anti-inflammatory agent, for example, in the skin. If your body doesn't have enough zinc, all of these aspects in your health suffer. Now, depending on what sources you read, some will claim that zinc deficiency is only a problem in the developing world and not in the developed world. From my experience, this is not true. In fact, I would go so far as to say zinc is one of the most deficient minerals in many people and it's getting worse over time. The reason studies aren't picking up on this trend is because most institutions still rely on blood tests for mineral testing when in fact you need to do a tissue analysis to spot a deficiency reliably. I know I say this a lot in my videos, but trust me when I say blood tests are very misleading. They come back fine in 90% of the cases, even when people are already developing serious deficiencies. Your best option is a properly done hair analysis, which I explain in more detail in a different video. Just as a side note, many websites will tell you that a clear and simple sign of zinc deficiency are small white spots on the fingernails. This can be true, however, I have found that many people without these spots also have a zinc deficiency, so please don't rely on it. The reason for the zinc deficiency epidemic is similar to that of magnesium, where food processing strips most of it away. That means nowadays you're left with very few quality sources of zinc. The best food sources are red meats, such as lamb and beef. Chicken, turkey, eggs and fish also contain some zinc. On the flip side, pretty much all vegetarian and vegan foods are low in zinc. Pumpkin seeds are an exception to this, 
and are a fairly good source. However, you would have to eat a huge amount to meet your necessary daily intake. Certain whole grains also have some small quantities of zinc, but the phytic acid in them makes it more difficult for the body to actually digest it. Another problem leading to widespread zinc deficiency is stress. Just like with magnesium, in times of stress, the body loses a lot of zinc. This is part of the body's fight or flight response to stress, where calming minerals such as magnesium and zinc are eliminated and stimulating minerals such as copper are retained. When you are under constant stress and never replenish your body's zinc reserves, at some point your body will no longer be able to properly relax. This is very common in a lot of people who feel tired but wired, where they are drained of energy but their mind is constantly racing and cannot calm down even when there are no immediate stressors around. In most cases their zinc to copper ratio is completely messed up where they have way too little zinc and way too much copper in their tissue. This condition is called copper overload or copper toxicity and can lead to all kinds of health problems down the road. Okay, this takes me to the last part of the video, which is zinc supplementation. When and how much should you supplement? I find that almost everyone today needs a zinc supplement because when you look at the hair analysis of an average person, their copper is too high and their zinc too low. Like I said a second ago, this is a clear sign of chronic stress. What you have to understand is that zinc and copper are antagonists, meaning when one goes up in the body, the other goes down. Bringing the zinc-copper ratio back into a healthy balance should be an important part of every supplementation routine, but doing this isn't always easy. You see, the more you suffer from chronic stress and the less you relax, the more copper accumulates in your body over time. It does this in places such as the liver, brain and muscles. This is called biounavailable copper and it works just like the biounavailable calcium I talked about in my calcium video. It basically just sits in the tissue, cannot be used properly and creates a lot of oxidative stress. While there isn't enough time to cover the process of detoxing biounavailable copper in this video, what I can tell you is that if you get unwanted side effects from zinc supplements, it's usually not the zinc itself but the biounavailable copper that the zinc is pushing out. Common symptoms are acne, anxiety, restlessness, headaches and fatigue. Back when I first started supplementing zinc, I did it because of my bad skin and because I had heard about the benefits of zinc in relation to skin problems. Unfortunately, even small doses of 10 mg per day of zinc made my skin worse, not better. Back then, I didn't know anything about the zinc-copper relationship, so I assumed it was the zinc that was causing my skin to break out, even though it was really the copper that was being pushed out and causing all these reactions. I then stopped taking zinc, which made my copper overload worse in the long term. How much zinc someone can tolerate really differs from person to person. People with a lot of copper in their bodies will sometimes already have bad reactions to as little as 10 to 15 milligrams, while others can take 50 milligrams or even 75 milligrams without problems. The best way of determining your individual dosage is by getting a hair analysis and then working with a professional who can correctly interpret the analysis. Then gradually work your way up starting with 10 to 15 milligrams and adding 10 milligrams every week or so until you've reached your target dose. Taking too much zinc over weeks and months can ultimately lead to a copper deficiency because zinc also blocks copper absorption in the stomach. For people with too much copper in their body, this is exactly what you want to achieve. But for people with an existing copper deficiency, it can make things worse. Before we wrap up this video, let me quickly talk about different forms of zinc. The most common ones are organic forms such as zinc citrate, zinc gluconate or zinc picolinate. And then you have inorganic forms such as zinc sulfate and zinc oxide. I personally have only experience with the organic ones and can recommend all three forms. While zinc picolinate is usually sold as the most bioavailable form, I never had problems with zinc citrate or zinc gluconate either, and they are somewhat cheaper. While I've never taken zinc oxide orally, studies suggest it is less bioavailable than the organic forms, so I would stay away from it. Just as a side note, zinc oxide is often found in natural sunblockers, 
where it physically blocks the UV rays that come into contact with your skin. For this purpose, it works fine, since you're not worried about absorption, but instead its light blocking ability. Okay, to end this video and summarize the most important learnings, zinc is an important trace mineral and needs to be consumed regularly. It plays an important role in your immune system, hormone balance, and growth. Getting enough nowadays is difficult, especially if you don't or only rarely eat red meat. If you decide to supplement, start with a low dose and see how your body reacts to it.